So message queue is one of the uh, mode of client server communication which you might have already used uh, in your project or you might have already hear about this term. Uh, but sometimes people don't understand where exactly they have to use the message queue and where they have to use the traditional mode of communication. So in this video we are going to talk about what is message queue, uh, what is the use case of it and where we have to use, in which scenarios we have to use the message queue. So usually when it comes to client server communication there are two modes of communication available. One is uh, sync, synchronous and one is a synchronous way of communication. So when it comes to synchronous way of communication, the client actually raises a request to the server and then the client actually waits for the server to give a response back. So unless the server gives any response to the client, the client cannot proceed with any other operations. That's why we call it a synchronous communication. So one of the way to achieve synchronous communication is to use REST. REST is one of the examples of synchronous communication. Because once you open the HTTP connection, you cannot close the connection until you get a response from the server. But in case of an asynchronous communication, the client actually raises a request to the server, but the client doesn't have to wait for the server to get any response. So as soon as the client sends the, uh, raise the request to the server, it can go ahead and do some other operations. It doesn't have to wait for the server. And, and the way to achieve asynchronous communication is to use the message queue. So, so this is what we are going to focus um, in this video about the message queue. So to explain these concepts better using some real world examples, consider you are making a phone call to someone. So when you make a phone call, uh, in, in the call you might be asking some question to the other person at the other end. So you have to wait in the phone call until the other person answers you, right? And once you get the answer from the other person, then you cut the call. So that's the good example for the synchronous communication. For asynchronous communication, consider you are sending a text message to someone. So when you send an SMS to someone, you don't have to, uh, once you type it and then you send it, but you don't have to wait for uh, the SMS to be delivered and the response to be received by you. So you can send the text message and then you can go ahead and do some other work. Maybe after some time you can come back and check your mobile whether the message got delivered or you got any response from that. So that's the good example for asynchronous communication. Now let's see how it actually works in a typical client server setup. So consider you have a client So you have a client and you have a server and usually the client actually raises a request to the server and, and the request might have some kind of a data, the request might have some kind of a data that needs to be processed. So the server will receive the request, it receives the data and then it will process the data and it might store the data into uh, some kind of a database. So once the data is processed and stored in the database, then the server might give a response back to the client. So this is the typical example of how the client server communication happens in a synchronous way. Now when it comes to a synchronous way, yes, consider the similar example. So you have a client and you have a server and again you have the same database where you process the data and store the uh, data here. But in case of an asynchronous communication, when you use a message queue, in between the client and the server, you actually have a queue. So when the client wants to uh, raise a request to the server, uh, instead of the client talking directly to the server, the client will actually drop the message to the message queue. It actually put a message to the message queue and that message will be received by the server. So that message actually contains the data that needs to be processed. So the server receives the message from the queue and then it processes the data and then it stores the database. So in this case, the client actually doesn't have to wait for the server to process the data and then give a response back to the client. So the client will keep on sending the messages to the message queue and then the client will focus on the other operations. And also when you look at the message queue, as the name implied, it actually follows the principle of first in first out. So the first message that gets to the queue will be the first one that gets processed. Now there are, uh, so this is the typical example of how a message queue actually works in a client server communication. Now there are many advantages for this message queue. So one of the advantages is decoupling. So that uh, the services that actually communicate to each other using the message queue are highly decoupled to each other. 
But in case of a synchronous communication, the client and the server are tightly coupled to each other. Because in case of the synchronous communication, the client actually needs to know the details of the server to initiate the connection, right? It needs to know the uh, address details of the server and everything so that it can make a connection to the server. So in case in the future, if the server details are changed or updated, the client cannot make connection. So you, you, the client also has to get updated. Uh, it needs to know the latest changes of the server details so that it can initiate the connection. So any changes that happen to the server will impact the client as well because the client and the, and the server are tightly coupled to each other. But in case of the message queue, in case in the future if the server details are changed or if you completely remove the server and attach a new server, the client doesn't have to worry about that. Because the client only needs to know the details of the message queue because it always puts the messages into the queue. It doesn't know who is actually receiving the message and, it is, uh, and who is processing it. The client doesn't have to know about that. So in this case, the client and the server are completely decoupled to each other. So any changes that happen to the server will not impact the client. So that's one of the primary advantage of using the message queue. And another uh, uh, advantage of the message queue is uh, the communication in the message queue is highly reliable. The reason is, consider you have the synchronous way of communication between the client and the server. And in case, if the server goes down, if the server is not available for a certain period of time, uh, consider if it is it goes down for a uh, 30 minutes of time, something like that. So if the server is not available for 30 minutes of time, any data that the client sent to the server during that period of time will be lost, right? Because during that period, the client cannot make a successful connection to the server. So the client will keep on sending the message to the server. Uh, but for that 30 minutes period of time, any data that has been sent by the client to the server will be lost. But in case of a message queue based communication, even if the server is not available for the 30 minutes of time, any data that has been sent by the client to the server will be available in the queue. So even after 30 minutes of the time, if the server comes up, even after 30 minutes or even after one day or one month, if the server comes up, the server will start processing all the data from the queue. So technically, you don't lose any data in case of the message queue based communication. So that's why this, this mode of communication is highly reliable. And now you can ask me, so just because the message queue way of communication has a lot of advantages, you just cannot go ahead and replace all your synchronous mode of communication into message queue based communication. Because there are certain scenarios where you have to apply the synchronous mode of communication. Say for example, uh, consider an e-commerce website, right? So consider you are actually uh, submitting an order in the Amazon.com. So when you submit the order to Amazon, you don't have to wait for the order to be processed. So you can, you can go ahead and choose the product, put in the cart, and then you submit the order, and then you can close the browser and go back to some other one, right? You don't have to wait for the order to be processed. Once you submit the order, there are a lot of backend services available that will uh, fetch the message from the queue and then they, they will start processing it. But, but that, that, so that's a good example for having a, a message queue based communication. But in case, if you are paying for the data, Right? So you have to enter all your credit card details and then you have to initiate the payment transaction. So that should be a synchronous way of communication because you have to wait until the payment gets completed and you get an acknowledge saying that the payment is successful. You can't just close the browser in between and go back. Right. So that's a good example for a synchronous mode of communication. So actually you have to apply either the synchronous mode of communication or the message queue based communication based on the feature requirements or the application requirements. So in this video, we actually talked about what is message queue and what are the advantages of message queue and which scenarios we can actually apply the message queue. So I hope this video is useful for you. Thanks a lot for watching. Audio